Hi everyone, and today's Star Wars lore episode is on the Utapound Starfighter. The Porax 38, or the Utapound Starfighter, was known to few, but was respected by those who had flown it or had seen it in action. It was a solid, heavily armed and well shielded, and it was basis for a number of other craft. Now, it was manufactured in small numbers by Bupra uh, Torskill Abbey devices of the outer rim world of Utapau. The Porax 38 was an expensive starfighter by the standards of the Clone Wars, where mass produced trumped any consideration of building something to last. Now, the Utapounds wanted a ship that could still effectively patrol the entire Tarabar sector, even when deployed in small numbers. The Porax 38 was a long-range fighter with fuel and other supplies for 20 days of independent, op independent operation and was equipped with an onboard hyperdrive system with a range of over 3,000 light years. Now the compact, if, if a bit slow, Navy computer could calculate its own jumps when not simply using stored coordinates. The Starfighter's hull was well armoured, though the high capacity deflectors meant the fighters rarely had to rely purely on the strength of their hull plating. Now, the standard model was powered by a dual reactor system with spare capacity, making the Porax 38 an attractive option for those who might be looking to add some additional systems. One obvious consideration was a full life support system, which the original lacked. However, there was rarely a need for additional armament, as the standard weapon it carried, two powerful laser cannons, were more often than not quite sufficiently deadly. Now there are two instances of modified Porax 38s that are worthy of particular attention. And the first of these became was pretty much the basis of a whole type of fighter. When the Separatists refitted Caption Utapound Starfighters to create the Rogue class fighter. Now the primary difference with these craft was the stripped out larger cockpit, which was designed around the new pilots, the IG-100 Magna Guards. As these droids didn't require food or air, the space left when those support systems were actually stripped out pretty much allowed the Managars to fit into the fighter quite easily. And the second one that's um, of worthy note is, it's another rogue class one, just like the one we were talking about before, but this one served as the basis of the bounty hunter Cad Bane's um, fighter, which he called the Xanadu Blood. It was a gift from his separatist employers. Now, Bane installed full life support on his, as well as a number of other secret extras. He could easily fl fly the fighter remotely, for example, using his wrist coordinate controls. Now, though its accommodation was cramped, to say the least, the Xanadu blood could even carry two passengers, and the main laser cannon weapons and the shields remain unchanged. And there you have it, that's a bit of lore about the um, lesser known Utapon Starfighter which you would have seen the Magna Guards flying in the Clone Wars TV series. So if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like, uh, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment or two, let me know what you think of the video, and I'll catch you all in the next one.